Meow, meow, meow. Yeah. You enjoying your catio? You having fun? Hi. Hi. Hello. Want to come inside? Well, you have to come in soon. I'm leaving soon. My friends, good afternoon. It's been a wonderful morning. Cat got to enjoy the great outdoors in his catio while I just did some work in the super studio. Been loving starting my days, working on quads, doing some stuff on the computer, just running around my studio and uh, kind of in that workflow, you know? But we're getting out and we're going flying and in today's vloggity, we're doing something that is pretty overdue, which is a trick tutorial. So the trick that we're going to be covering today is called the, um, well actually I don't really know what this is called. Now technically this freestyle drone trick is really just an inverted yaw spin, but we're going to do something a little bit specific with it. What we're going to do is we are going to fly to the side of an object and as we go past the object we flip upside down and then we yaw spin so that we track that object as we pass it. So it's kind of a specifically controlled inverted yaw spin. It almost has a similar effect of a trippy spin. So it's somewhere between an inverted yaw spin and a trippy spin but you don't really have to do the cross coordination. It's, it's really all about timing. This is actually a trick I've had kind of a weird relationship with because I started working on it four or five months ago and it took a long time before I even started putting it in videos and it took me so long because I didn't really know what I was trying to do. It was just something that I started kind of flowing into naturally but it didn't look right but I knew something was there. But I ended up boiling it down to something very simple, something that's pretty easy to do and I hope that you guys can learn it a lot quicker especially if I can come up with some helpful tips to share. So I'm going to try and break it down. Let's get the goggles on and figure out what we're doing here. That was a bad one, but that's pretty much it. Very simple. Let's get a better one here. That's nice. I'm tracking kind of the bottom of the object there. I want to track more like the top of the light pole. I think a light pole is a really good... There it is. That's what I want. Light pole is a really good object to learn this on because it's thin, so it's going to force you to have to track it better and it's gonna be easy to see if you're doing it right. Now you may notice that I don't have a stick camera set up and what I'm doing instead is I have a special on-screen display set up that will show me stick position. Look at that. I wanna try using this, one, because it's easier than having to wear a camera, but also I'm hoping that it will show um, a little bit more precisely. I think like small movements are hard to see in a literal stick camera. What you'll see is that, like I said, very simple trick. You just go upside down and give it some yaw, and that is pretty much it. What you want to do is be very comfortable with inverted yaw spins, so being able to go upside down and give it that yaw, and that's going to help you find that position where it's just yaw. Because if your angle is off and maybe you look too far at the ground, now that yaw, oh, it gets, it gets off axis, right? Now you can compensate for that, so in this case here we'll look too far at the ground and we'll also use roll in the opposite direction of my yaw to compensate. And so we still got that spinning, but really I think the best way to do it is to really nail that position where all you have to do is add in yaw, and then when you go to do the pass, oh yeah, that's what I wanted right there. And I think that one I actually was looking a little bit more up at the object and kind of without even thinking about it, what I did was add in some roll in the same direction to stay on axis with the light pole. So, you know, I'm talking about getting in that sweet spot and where that spot is, is actually having your quad perfectly flat. So what that's going to look like for you is going to depend on your camera angle. 
because the more angle you have when your quad is flat, the more you're going to be looking down at the ground. So since the easiest way to do this trick is getting it flat, so all you have to do is give it yaw input, it is going to be easier with a little bit less camera angle. I think I'm currently running like 20 or 25 or so. So let's try and demonstrate this a couple more times. We're just gonna get the quad flat, but inverted. Give it yaw, there it is. So think about in normal forward flight, if I wanna turn with the horizon flat, I just have to find the right mix of roll and yaw in the same direction, and now I'm turning with the horizon flat. And think about how my nose is pointed down. Well, the same goes for being inverted with your nose pointed up. Something you might find yourself struggling with is which way do you move the yaw stick? What you're doing is you're pointing the yaw stick at the object to track it. It can still be a little bit of a weird thing to wrap your mind around, especially because you're upside down, so you're nervous about hitting the ground and all that stuff. So one way I found I could make this easier was to set it up so that I move both the roll and the yaw stick in the same direction. So if this is the object that I want to fly past, and I'm gonna go to the right of it, well, when you're upright, you would go left yaw, but when you're inverted, you're gonna go right yaw. It's hard to show. And the way I like to remember how to do that is to roll in and out the same way. So I'm gonna approach this object on the right of it, I'm gonna use right roll, then use right yaw while inverted, and then exit with right roll. So just roll, yaw, roll. Very simple. You can obviously enter with like a left roll, but then it's like harder to remember that you have to push the uh, push the yaw stick in the opposite way. I'll try it though. So, left in. Nope. Oh man, it is that is still kind of a. <laughs> Let me see if I can get that. We're gonna go left roll, then right yaw. Left roll, then right yaw. We can do this. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> that was that was pretty close. Yeah, I, I guess I definitely rely on that trick of using the. Um, the same direction, right? Same to be said for going to the left. Left, left, left. And there's a bunch of different looks that this trick can have depending on how close or far away you are and how fast you're going, which then is gonna affect how fast you need to yaw. Like imagine if we were going really fast. Whoops. Ooh. Ooh. All right, not gonna lie. Kind of embarrassed with that crash. That was <laughs> such needless concrete smackage. You know, I mentioned that light poles are a good object to learn this on because of their shape, but the downside is they're likely going to be over concrete, so flyer beware. Um, the point I was trying to make is that the more speed that you have going into it, the more yaw you're going to have to use, the faster you're going to have to yaw as you go past it, because the idea, the, the intended look, is that as you pass the object, you keep it in the center of the screen. So if you're moving past it, you're gonna have to use more of that yaw. If you're kind of moving slow past it, use a little bit less, and just depends on the look that you're going for. And there's really not a whole lot to explain past that. It's, it's kind of one of those tricks that you just have to practice. My hope is that since you guys have seen it a bunch of times now and had it broken down, that you can learn it a lot faster than I learned it. I struggled with it, but I do think that the tricks that I struggle with learning I end up being the best at because I really have to break it down. And this seemingly very simple trick, I did have to break down. And like I explained, what helped me the most was forcing everything to kind of be in the same direction. So I'm going to go to the right of an object. I'm going to enter this with right roll. Then I'm going to use right yaw, and then I'm going to exit with right roll. And just kind of keeping everything as like right, 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 or left, 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 left makes it a little bit easier. But you can't shake it up. You could use a different direction of roll and yaw. You could even probably get into this with like a pitch or a power loop. I think it'd be really cool to maybe like power loop at something and then do the thing past it. That's, that's something to work on. I feel like maybe I've done that before. I don't know. That's definitely something to work on. That sounds pretty cool. I hope this made sense. I Again, I just don't know what to call it. It's really, it's just a partial inverted yaw spin with the intent of tracking an object. I suppose the most appropriate name would be like an inverted track or an inverted 
Pan or something like that, but I'd like there to be a snappy name. I always love doing these trick tutorials though. I feel like it really helps me learn the trick to forcing myself to explain it. So again, hope that helped a little bit. I'm gonna enjoy some more flying. Talk to me, I love that sound. Out of words when you're around. I've been trying to calm down. On a high when you're around. Lift me from the ground. Oh man, that dive is so tricky. Like you you can't you can either do the top one or you can go all the way to the bottom because any of the middle ones are blocked. That was a great rip though. That was that was actually the very flight after doing kind of the trick breakdowns. That's another bonus of doing trick breakdowns is I get in this this mindset of where I'm very technically focused on exactly what I'm doing so that I can explain it. And then afterwards, I've gotten all that kind of like technical focus but then I'm just letting it flow and not thinking about it so much and I feel like I can really like get into it. So if you can't tell, I'm psyched. I'm gonna get a couple more packs in, but then I'm gonna head downtown and uh, gonna have a date night with Ashley. Just let dogs on the bar here. It's totally irresponsible. <laughs> I've been getting comments. People, uh, people miss you in the vlog. It's been a minute. Yeah. Can we miss our date nights? Whose fault is that? Well, we still go on date nights. I just, I haven't recorded one in a while. So here we are. Doing the things. Date night. Date night. Date night. Date night. Date night. Ah! I've been trying to come up with like a name for a trick, but I kind of want to. Is it too vain if I name a trick after myself? Like, if I call it like a drip twist or something? I don't think so. Well, it's like... Is, I, it, is it a, is it a trick, like that's a trick that you have created? Or what is I it? don't, no, no. It's such a simple trick and I'm pretty sure I've seen other people do it. No, I know I've seen other people do so it. You want but like, I feel like I've been, no, but I feel like I've been doing it a lot lately. And I feel like I'm pretty good at it. And I'm the first one to do a tutorial on, or maybe not even. I don't know. So there's some kind of like other. Well, there's the Matty flip. The Matty flip, yes, yeah, the Matty flip. But this isn't a flip. It's like a turn. Well, the the. the... It's not even really a full turn. It's or a layaw. 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 I do like that. Really? I don't no, like that. No, that's actually it's really stupid. terrible for it's a horrible. trick. It's horrible. 